In this short video, I'm going to talk about hydrostatic pressure distribution and a resultant force as a result of hydrostatic pressure distribution. Let's consider two scenarios. Scenario number one is that I have a box that I'm going to submerge that box underwater, right? So essentially, I have a box like this. It's a rectangular box, right? I'm going to horizontally submerge it underwater. So there is going to be some pressure distribution on top of this, right? On this face of this box. And I'm going to sketch that right over here for you. So this is going to be the box that I'm going to submerge. And then there's going to be water right on top of that, which will be right over here. So this is the surface of water. And I'm going to show you the pressure distribution on top of the surface. So again, my box has a depth to it. Right now you're seeing this. So the pressure is going to be on top of this surface, right? Let's take a look at it. So if you're watching this video, this means that you already know what hydrostatic pressure is. So the equation that we use for hydrostatic pressure is P is equal to gamma times H. Gamma is specific weight, and H is the depth to the point that we want to calculate the pressure for. So let's say I'm interested to calculate the hydrostatic pressure on top of the surface at this point and right over here at this point. So the depth will be H. So and this is water. Our fluid is water. So if I ask you what is the pressure over here, you're going to tell me gamma of water times h and if I want to show you the magnitude of that pressure it would be something like this if I ask you what's the magnitude of pressure right over here you're gonna tell me exactly like this why because the elevation has not changed from this point to this point this is a horizontal surface so the pressure is going to be exactly the same and it's going to have the exact same magnitude. As a matter of fact, at this point and this point and this point and this point and this point, they all are going to have the same pressure on this surface of the box that I showed you. Okay, so this is called a uniform pressure distribution. Why? Because the magnitude of pressure on top of the surface that you can see just only one layer of that is going to be exactly the same so this is a uniform pressure distribution if i ask you what would be the resultant force on top of this box as a result of this pressure distribution this uniform pressure distribution pressure distribution you're going to tell me that the resultant force is going to act on the centroid of this box what is the centroid of this box? It's actually pretty easy to um, calculate. Okay, so if I ask you to find the centroid of this box, you are going to use your finger and try to balance this box on top of your finger. When you find the point that you can balance this box on top of your finger, that point is going to be the centroid of this shape that I have. Over here, I have a rectangle. So the centroid of this rectangle is going to be right in the middle of it, right? So if I want to show the centroid on this graph, it would be right over here. This is the centroid of this rectangular surface that I showed you. Okay, so, and the resultant force is going to act right over here on the centroid, and that would be F sub R, or the resultant force, as a result of the pressure distribution, the uniform pressure distribution. Okay, this was uniform, right? Now we have another type of pressure distribution as well, and that's called hydrostatic pressure distribution. Let me show you how that is going to be. So I am going to actually continue the surface of water over here, and I am going to, this time, instead of having my box horizontally over here like this, I am going to have it like this, vertically. And I'm gonna make sure that the top of the box is gonna be right on the surface of the water, so exactly like this. And then I'll be measuring the pressure distribution on this surface, on this surface over here. Okay, let's see how it will look like. So this time I am going to have my box to be oriented exactly like this. Notice that 
the top of it is right on the top of on the surface of the water okay and again we have the centroid of the box right over here right in the middle of it okay um, if I ask you what is the pressure at this point which is right on the surface of the water you're gonna tell me that the pressure at this point is equal to zero that's the relative pressure because this pressure is atmospheric okay and then if I ask you what is the pressure right at this point you are gonna tell me give us the value of depth at this point and I'm gonna tell you that this is little h and you're gonna tell me the value of pressure at this point is going to be gamma times h and this is the h and if you want to show the magnitude it would be this arrow how about just a little bit higher than that at this depth so you're going to tell me the magnitude of pressure is going to be just a little bit smaller than what it was over here similarly this is going to go smaller and smaller and the pressure distribution would be like this so the face of the pressure distribution is going to be a triangular distribution as you can see over here perfect so now compare this pressure distribution with this one obviously this is not a uniform pressure distribution as you go deeper in water the pressure just the pressure is going to increase so now if i ask you where would be the location, the position where the resultant force is going to act on this? You're going to tell me, obviously, it's not going to be the centroid of this shape. Why? Because the pressure is not uniform anymore. So it's going to be another point, let's say right over here. And we are going to call this point center of pressure or CP. So the resultant force as a result of the pressure distribution on this surface, on this surface, is going to be somewhere over here, and this would be the resultant force. All right, let's do an, one more scenario. And this scenario is going to be, um, so here we had the top of the box to be right on top of the surface. This time, we're going to put the box submerged in the water, right? Right over here and see what happens. Okay, this time, I am going to have the box right over here. And right in the middle, we're going to have the centroid of that box. Perfect. This time, if I ask you to calculate pressure distribution, again, we're going to repeat the same process. Calculate the pressure on top of it right at this point. If this depth is H1 and the point over here, this depth is going to be H2. So the pressure that is applied right over here is equal to gamma H sub 1. And the pressure that is going to be applied right over here is equal to gamma H sub 2. Notice that this pressure is obviously larger than this pressure. So the arrow that I have drawn is larger that shows the magnitude of it. So the pressure distribution, the face of it is trapezoidal in this case. Okay, again over here, if I ask you where is the resultant force going to be um, acted or applied on this surface over here, you're going to tell me because this is not a uniform distribution, the resultant force is not going to be applied on the centroid. It's going to be a little bit lower to a point that we call center of pressure. And then we show it with an arrow like this, F sub R or resultant force. Okay, just to wrap up what I want to talk about, um, I want to, from this, I want us to calculate two things. So we are going to, when it comes to the resultant force, we are going to learn how to calculate two things. One would be the magnitude. And the magnitude of resultant force essentially means how large it's going to be. What's the value of this force that we are going to calculate, usually in Newton, right? And the other thing that we want to calculate is the location 
that the resultant force is going to be applied. So that could be our, I'm going to write location. What I mean is how the position of the center of pressure for different problems that we have, okay? So over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how you can calculate this magnitude of force and how you can calculate the location that the resultant force is applied to. All right, let's take a moment and understand this figure that I have drawn over here for you. All right, going back to the example of this box, this time to derive the generalized equation, I have put this box, submersion water, slanted, right? So this is the, where the box is, and I want to measure uh, the force, the resultant force that is acting on this surface over here, when it's right over here. So obviously, there is a hydrostatic uh, pressure distribution on top of this, and as a result of that hydrostatic uh, pressure distribution, there will be a resultant force acting to the center of pressure at this point that I have shown with C, excuse me, P. And this point, C, is a centroid of this, which is right in the middle of it, right in the middle of this box over here. Okay, so if I want to show you the depth to centroid, in fluid mechanics, we show the depth to centroid by H bar. And the slanted distance from the surface of water all the way to this point is going to be y bar. Obviously, because this is slanted with the with with this angle of theta, there is a relationship between y bar and h bar, and that relationship is simply is if you want to calculate h bar, that would be y bar times sine of theta, and theta again is this angle over here. Similarly, yp is the slanted distance to the cent uh, center of pressure, and hp is the depth to center of pressure. So if I want to calculate hp, that would be yp times sine of theta. Okay, so this is the relationship that we have. Now that you understand this, again, we want to calculate the magnitude and location. Magnitude means that we want to find the value of resultant force. And that is pretty straightforward to calculate. So gamma h bar times cross-sectional area. Well, what do I mean by that? Gamma is the specific weight of water. H bar is depth to centroid. And A is the area of the surface. So if I have this box right over here, the area that the force is acting on is the area of this rectangle over here, right? So this area would be the area that the force is acting on. This gives me the magnitude of force. Obviously, there is a relationship between h bar and y bar. So I can rewrite this equation as gamma y bar sine of theta and then times a. This is the general equation that you can calculate the magnitude of the force over here. Notice that if this surface over here, this box over here, was not slanted, if it was perfectly vertical, then h and y would be exactly equal. So in other words, I'll write it over here. If the surface is vertical, what happens is that h bar becomes equal to y bar and yp becomes equal to hp if the surface is vertical. So this is the general equation. If the surface is equal, you can alternative, or alternatively use h bar or y bar, yp or h sub p. Okay, so this was the magnitude. Now let's talk about the location. And when I say the location, I want to calculate this distance, from slanted distance from the surface of water all the way to p. And that is...
Okay, so as we expected, yp is going to be larger than y bar. Take a look at it. y bar is the slanted distance to centroid. yp is the slanted distance to uh, center of pressure. So obviously this should be larger than that. But how much larger? It depends on moment of inertia, which is in the um, numerator, and um, we actually show it by I bar. So this is moment of inertia. And in the denominator, we have Y bar times, again, area. What area? The area that force is acting on. Okay. So these are the two general equations that we are going to use to calculate magnitude and the location that the force is acting on when we have um, a flat surface. I should mention that, that this works when you have a flat surface that is submerged underwater. Very interesting concept, and you can use these equations to solve a lot of problems. In the next video, I'm going to go over a couple of examples to make this crystal clear. Okay, before we see another example, I just forgot to tell you this. You're going to ask, how do we calculate this moment of inertia over here, right? Usually, your textbook has a table that shows you how to calculate I bar or moment of inertia. For example, for this example, so our, the surface that... Um, the force, resultant force is going to act on is a rectangular surface, right? This surface right over here. So for this surface, if the height of this uh, plate is H and the width of that is B, then obviously this is the area of this rectangular area. And then the moment of inertia based on your textbook can be calculated like this. This can be actually written for all other different types of areas as well. If you have a circular area, half circle, so on and so forth. So I encourage you to take a look at your textbook to understand the moment of inertia for different surfaces.